It says, we have missed the most important thing about God. Finding it changes everything. Well, what is it, Mike, that we've missed that we need <laughs> well, to know? Uh, actually, the book comes out of a, a, a frustration that came out of uh, two different streams. One was listening to all the popular media and discussion uh, about Christians and God that portray Christians as being against everything, and God is against everything. And, you know, if you live the gospel message, then you're, you are a hateful bigot. And that is not the gospel that I know. Now, I grew up in a church where I was told what not to do, sermon after Sunday of what not to do, and then the next Sunday we'd get together and praise God we hadn't done anything. Um, But the gospel for me uh, was when I started working with a bunch of young adults uh, in a Tuesday night worship experience we call Kairos, and they would come to me and say, hey, here's where I've messed up my life, and here's how broken things, and I don't know how I'm going to get things right. And I would look at them and go, do you know your yes? Well, that was the first time anybody had ever asked him about that. Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything else is demonic. Well, when I was a little kid, you know, I went to church way too much, you know, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Uh, You know, if you spent the night with us on Saturday night, my parents would not ask you to go to church. (laughs) They would tell you when we were leaving. And, uh, and you and better be ready. A lot of our yeah. guests. I mean, that was where I grew up. But, uh, uh, you know, when I read that passage, I said, wow, that's a little strong. And, you know, because uh, we use more words than that. But if you understand maybe what Jesus is saying, Tim, Ray, I have a yes for you. Mike, I have a yes for you. Let your yes be your yes, and everything else is no. Anything other than my yes for you is demonic is the power of evil in your life. And what I found out working with these young adults is if you can sit down and help them understand who they are, how they're created, that they're loved in Jesus just for who they are, and they start living out of the power of that yes, then the no's take care of themselves. Uh, Paul in Philippians says, here are the things you think about. You think about what is beautiful, what is noble, what is right. These are the things that fill your mind. James tells us whatever you fill your mind with becomes the desires of your heart. And the desires of your heart become the action of your life. And that's where sin happens, and that's where sin brings death. Uh, Mike, let me ask you this. This, mm-hmm. this being Holy Week, and we're moving mm-hmm. up toward Good Friday and Easter, um, tell us, t- was the cross a great yes from God? And if so, yeah. what, what yeah. does that mean? Yeah. Um, the, um, the Antique Road Show. Do you ever watch that show? Yes, love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I love that show. It's funny as all get out because there's always a guy who thinks he has something right. that is not worth it, and, and the guy who has no clue what he has. And, 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 and the expert will say, oh, see where the artist has signed you, uh, signed the painting or signed the piece, and this is what makes it worth an untold amount of money. The reality is, is that people have not been told what they're worth, and we can't tell them what they're worth because they have been signed by the artist. And the artist is God himself, and that's what it means to be the bearer of the image of God, the bearer of the Imago Dei. What I can tell you is that my friends in real estate tell me that the, that the only uh, thing that something is worth is what somebody's willing to pay for it. And on the day the world demanded our ransom, God was willing to pay with the life of his only son. That's how much we're worth. And when people understand how much they're worth, they begin to live with a whole new sense of purpose and value. They don't, they don't give themselves away cheaply or act as if their lives don't matter because they know how much they have been paid for, how much somebody's paid for them. That is an amazing message. of uh, Self-worth does not come from a false praise of your friends. And false praise, you know, the self-esteem move in our country, hey, tell people they're wonderful even when they're not. The, the, the self-worth of a person comes from you're created in the image of God, and you were bought with the price of his son, Jesus Christ. Mm. Talk, and the talk. resurrection yeah. says that Jesus is not going to let even death stand in between you and him, and he's going to come to you. The good news of the gospel is that God comes to us. Not that you can get to God, but that God has come to us. Talking to Pastor Mike Glenn, uh, he serves the Brentwood uh, First Baptist Church, uh, Brentwood Baptist Church in Brentwood, mm-hmm. Tennessee. Uh, and his book is called The Gospel of Yes. And we it's subtitled, We Have Missed the Most Important Thing About God, Finding It Changes Everything. 
Mike, I don't disagree with anything you said, brother. Uh, and, and you, you like the way well, somebody. You, it, it's a whole new because. But but what, but what but, happens, but I can ask you something. Uh, if we, if we if we just think about all the things we do wrong. Yeah. And we put sin in the middle of our head, then that's all we think about. And when it's all you think about, sooner or later it becomes what you do. I understand. I have a real bad addiction to Oreo cookies. Yeah. And if I get up in the morning and say, I'm not going to eat an Oreo cookie, no matter what I'm doing, I'm not going to eat an Oreo cookie. And if I go through the day promising I'm not going to eat an Oreo cookie, by the end of the day, I'm standing right in the middle of the cookie aisle because it's, it, the, my thoughts consume me. But what if we go and say, listen, Jesus has a place for you, a purpose for you. He created you with gifts uh, and abilities to be part of his work. Everybody has a gift. Nobody has all the gifts because there's something about us working together and all the diversity of personalities and styles and races and ethnic uh, backgrounds and languages that, that reveals the glory of God in a way that one person cannot. Right. Let me ask and we you all this. bring our gifts together yeah. and live out of that, and there's a whole new freedom that comes with that. Um, I don't, like I said, I, I, I agree. I, I don't disagree with anything you said. But I, I got to ask you this because I, there's a trend among evangelical Christians in uh, particular that, that I'm noticing that bothers me and maybe mm-hmm. you, and I'm not saying you're you're doing this today but avoiding the word sin and repentance <clears throat> I, I heard a message the other day you know a guy a very well-known guy preaching you know and he said you know I uh, I, I, I just want to uh, I don't want to talk about negative stuff because people don't want to hear that you know they don't they don't want to hear negative stuff and and I'm thinking to myself you cannot talk about the gospel of Jesus Christ the the first words out of Jesus mouth repent yeah i mean so yeah. i mean it seems to me like we are we uh, we some of us in the evangelical uh, our christian community are trying to get around that part of the gospel because the wor- world doesn't want to hear that so uh, how well, do we deal with that likes to hear it Pardon? Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I've been avoiding my physical because I know I'm going to go, and the doctor's going to tell me I'm 20 pounds overweight. Right. <laughs> so you know, I don't want to go hear the bad news. But but the the role of the church one is 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 not to give people what they want, but to give them what they need, and and that's not always the same thing. And honestly, people know they're messed up. They know something's wrong. And if you don't address it, then they don't think you know what's going on. They don't think you understand reality. But the thing that we uh, we have confused, we have watered down repentance uh, to where that it is just feel bad about what you did or apologize for what you did. Mm-hmm. Repentance means to turn and start walking another way, to walk away right. from the life you were living and start following Christ. And when you start following Christ, uh, you know, he fills your life with the good things so much that you are ruined for the old things of the world. We're talking to Pastor Mike Glenn. The Gospel of Yes uh, is the title of his book. It's available everywhere. You know, you know, Mike. What does someone do who has really blown it badly? Who mm. who comes to church and they feel racked with guilt? They, mm-hmm. and, and frankly, they feel that they've been put on the shelf. God can't use them. Mm-hmm. Hopeless. Mm-hmm. I, I, in some ways, Mike, I think our churches are filled with people like that. How do you? How do you get from that sense of guilt over maybe, I mean, maybe you really have made terrible mistakes in your past. How do you get from there to God's yes? We always think that there's something in our life that disqualifies us, that, uh, boy, that's great news, Mike. I wish I'd heard it 20 years ago, last year, whatever, but. And people who stay up late at night and study language say that when you use the word but, we don't hear anything before it. <laughs> True. So, so, you know, when, when, the, when your employer says, hey, I loved having you here part of the company the last 10 years, but i got to lay you off. Right. You, the only thing you hear is you got laid off. Right. Um, and sometimes the only thing we hear is, boy, that's really great news, but I have messed up. Romans 8 says that everything works together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Now, here's my redneck interpretation of that. Our God is such a good cook, so creative, so powerful, so wondering, that he can take whatever you throw in your your life and whatever anybody else throws in your life. Some of our pain is not our fault. It's been done to us, and he can take all of that and make a, a, a life worth living with purpose. People come to me and say, hey, uh, this is what happened. Don't tell anybody. 
I'll die if anybody finds out. And, and we'll start working together. We'll start praying together. We'll read Scripture, and then Jesus does what Jesus does. They'll bring, he'll, he'll bring healing. He'll bring hope, restoration, and the person's life will be turned around. And someone will say, come tell me your testimony. And they'll tell me, hey, I'm going to give them a testimony. Come watch. And, and I'll sit in the back, and lo and behold, you know what happens. The very thing they were so ashamed of becomes the very first line of their testimony. Wow. Our God is so good, so powerful, so loving, creative. He can take the worst moment of your life, and he can turn it to the first line of your testimony. Mm. Mike, thanks for uh, – we're out of time for the segment. Oh. I know. But we I'm just got started here. Just, hey, Mike, don't uh, eat any Oreo cookies today. Oh, gosh, got to stay away from them. Buddy. Yeah. Tell don't you, even though, think uh, about Oreo cookies, Mike. Oh, I can't even see. Now you put them in my head. Well, now. I wouldn't be the, the one to bring up Oreo cookies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I think you should we avoid just, We just want to be a blessing and help well, I want you to avoid oh. Oreo cookies. <laughs> so, Mike, if well, you if you struggle – Thanks for having me on today. You struggle with Oreo cookies today, you call me, okay? God 